Wait, guacamole, DC, that's, see, <laughs> that's what I first heard. I think that's when I first heard you was that. Sorry about, the, sorry about the uncomfortable segue of, of switching from... Yeah. Where did we, no, we went from... Muddy waters to uh, whatever. Well, actually, that's not such a stretch, to be honest. But I wanted people to know that what you told me was, was, hey, you know, I just heard this stuff on the radio and I wanted it to sound like yeah, that now. Yeah, yeah. So that you develop... You it was a huge thing for me to hear, uh, being very familiar with the Beatles song Yesterday. Um, and how beautiful, it's the most recorded or covered song in history or something. Beautiful, everything's beautiful about it. it uh, it's, it's a perfect piece of music, lyrically and musically. Um, and on Sundays, there was a thing called Pick of the Pops with a, a super uh, DJ radio guy called Alan Freeman, lovely guy. Uh, and he would play the top, for, uh, top 40, top 50, I'm not sure. Anyway, and I'd be down there religiously in my mother's and father's pub with the radio cranked, you know, while it was closed on the Sunday. And one day I hear that there's a lot of it, just superficial stuff going through, poppy stuff. And, and then suddenly I hear this astonishing voice of Ray Charles singing yesterday and just exploring darker emotions, darker aspects of the melody and the lyric than I, I ever imagined or dreamed possible. And that was like, for me, six years of great university education, just hearing that three minute Ray Charles uh, translation and, and his interpretation of McCartney's yesterday. That's and, it, and it changed the way I just sang. And then that was the key to the treasury to open me up to the Stax Vault songs out of... Um, Nashville? No, Memphis. No, uh, no, Memphis, yeah. And, uh, and of course, early Atlantic stuff, Aretha, you know. It was this tra amazing transition from M Muddy Waters. I never, ever stopped listening to Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, Sonny Boy Williamson, Bobby Bland. These, they, okay. come, they were so talented, they, they still accompany me today, but they would lead me to uh, Stax, and then the sass and the sweat and the gut, you know, uh, soul there, and then over to Motown in Detroit, which was even m more of an astonishing departure. But all of these African Americans were, to me, the most inspirational, influential aspect of all my past. But everything's a key to unlock the next door if you're curious and interested. Well, that know? leads that leads me to the, something that um, you know. You you joined Purple when you were when you were young, and you joined a band that was established for you, my twenty first birthday. And you made it your own, but um, but you know, is it fair to say that when White Snake started, that's the real DC coming out, the yeah. real your, all your influences? Because White Snake sounded nothing like really like Purple, even though you, mm. a couple of the guys came with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Um, but I mean, you really, the easy thing would have been to, okay, let's just get another Blackmore and let's do the same yeah. thing. And you took took it to a whole a whole new place, which well, I knew, great. Yeah, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I just, um, you, needed, you need other people's support initially to get something off the ground. And I really didn't get it at that time. Uh, so it was a situation, my first solo album, my first recording after Deep Purple was David Coverdale, Whitesnake. And you can hear me trying to, <laughs> desperately trying to find my direction you know that's cool uh but it, it's it's confusing to the listener because there's so many different aspects you know uh Northwind's the follow-up was more of a clue of the blueprint for what became white snake but white snake was very much like a local band i worked with this kind of way we take soul music and rock it up well it you was know? it was pretty badass and all of but the biggest fans. i think the biggest compliment i've had was from Richard blackmore uh who said to me you have a man's voice you know, don't lose it or something. And, and that is a compliment I'll carry with me to my grave. And you still have. I love having a man's voice, you know? I gotta say, I gotta tell you guys what happens when we're, when we're in the studio, you know, David's got his, he's got a, a team of people and I'm one of the cogs in the I'm wheel. I'm a diva, of course. I'm, I'm one of the cogs in the wheel, but when it comes down to, you know, when we're writing and stuff, we're, we're, we're like, you know, me and Michael McIntyre and, and Toast, we'll all be like, okay, is, when's DC coming? And, he, and it's like, okay, he's on his way. Quick, get the mics up, get it. You know, and it's like <laughs> running around and, and you come in and you just start wailing. And it's like, the, the trick is, is for us to be, you know, 
to capture yeah. your voice, the size of your voice. It in, wears in me out room. sitting around. I, you know, I want to get, as you know, it's like straight, straight into it. And uh, and I also like to record early, which I'm, I really am thankful to the people around us who uh, who are prepared to come in early because it's just not the cliched way you do it. I mean, with Purple, I was never singing before ten at night, eleven at night. You know, after midnight. It, you guys did. My stuff, we we play the, we'd record the backing track during the day, and then when everyone felt comfortable with their part, I'd take a cassette, you know, whatever device to my hotel room, I'd write the song and go down and the bar would be open. I mean, I used to have a music stand with <laughs> scotch and, you know, single malt and cognac and everything there, whatever I fancied. And it was there and I'd work all night. We'd stagger, Martin Birch and I'd stagger out of the studio at 7.30 in the morning. See, I assume that you guys... Arm in arm. <laughs> you know, I assume that you guys would, would you know, get a, a good night. Good night's rest. You'd come in early. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's more nowadays. You know, there's might have been, there might have been <laughs> coffee involved or something, but you, you guys didn't like have drinks and stuff and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Adult adult beverage, I believe it was called. I know. Uh, and I actually, I still enjoy enjoy swimming and bathing in alcoholic adult beverage. You haven't beverages. started. You haven't started drinking yet, today, though. I know because it's early. Not today. T today's early. I, well, actually, I did want to have a drink, and you pulled the plug on that. We can have one. Like it isn't a partnership. We can have. We can have one. Whatever you fancy. I mean, I feel like we're in Fr we're in France or something right now. We can drink whenever we want. Oh, <laughs> we're in the man cave. Anything goes. <laughs> Did I say welcome to the man cave studios? I forgot. All right, my turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, when's the first time you heard or you saw White Snake? Um, the first time I heard White Snake was in was and I. I'll be honest with you, it was a little bit later, it was in 84, or around that time. Was that Cal, when you were working with Cal? Yeah, I was working with a, a Scottish singer called Cal Swan, and he was he, he was a huge fan of yours. And, and actually, um, I had gotten this call that, that, um, from a drummer that was working with Yngwie, and he had, this drummer said, hey, Yngwie's gone, gone away, but I found the next David Coverdale. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the next? It's like, what happened to the first one? We don't need another one, you know? Yes, yes, but, yes. Not finished yet! But, uh, no, he was, he, he actually really looked a lot like you, and it's so wild because his mannerisms are... Now Did he I, have the ankle socks? The big uh, leg had, warmers? If you had him, he had, he had him. But, I mean, he, he was, he was a, he's a great... Cue for a photograph there, boys and girls. He's a great guy, and he was a, a, an amazingly great singer, and he, and he, he taught yeah. me a lot. But working with him, had really, sometimes I get deja vu. It's like, wow, he really was like David a lot. You yeah, know? yeah. But, um, so the first thing I heard was probably, you know, that... I'm gonna change it up though. You talk too much. Never seen what's on your mind. It's written on your face. So that's that was the first song I probably heard. Okay. So then Cal turned me on to. He says, "Oh no, no." All the earliest. That's right. There's yeah, all yeah, this yeah. earlier stuff. And oh, sorry about that. A ready and willing one, did you? Yeah. Uh, he well, he turned me on to everything. Come and get it, ready and willing. Um, and so I had this. I, we, yeah, we were a big uh, import band on the in New York and in LA. But that was it. We never ever got into the Midwest America, the heartland of hard rock, you know. So I had I heard all these old older records, and I was like, "Wow, that was that's really cool yeah. stuff." And the thing that 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 um, that really 
the first time I really heard and used a, a minor seven chord was was yeah, because you yeah. were doing like Fool for Your Love and it had that had yeah. that. I'm not gonna make you sing it. He, this all was unplanned. I just kind of chucked it out at him. But this is his security blanket. I know that's the thing about singers is that you don't have anything to hide behind. We have I have my penis extension. Where is it? You know this um you know these kind of uh, my microphone stand. Oh, not this one. Oh, how terribly embarrassing. No, no. You know, th these chords you see? Oh, uh, Yeah. So I started really digging those those kinds of... Yeah, know. it's, you know... And I've, I've credit, credit where credit's due. That's, that's huge Stevie Wonder influence on me, those minor sevens. I loved, you know? Riding on the wall. Thirty months of baby letters on the wall. Right, hang on, okay. What's uh, what's any favorite song that uh, you and I have written together? What's your favorite song? I mean, I've got songs. I've... It's, I think it's I think it's going to be some Indian music in the raga style. Serious goosebumps. Ah, that's cool. And there's a strange feeling in my panties right now. What was in that? Fact, perfect time for a little break. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 